This is dear Mama Sal and it is yet another very pretty morning. It is, apparently I can't get my words out this morning. It is 16 degrees here in Southern British Columbia, which probably is about 60, 61. And there's a look. Yep, 60 in uh, the American equivalent. And I'm very, very grateful to Erin this morning. And before I forget, I'm going to make today's word listen. And what, what I'd like to challenge you to do is to listen to yourself. And the reason I'm thanking Erin was she was the one who remembered what it was I had said that I would talk about this week. So thank you for that, Erin. I really appreciate it. Um, but a quick update before I do that, um, for those of you who uh, were concerned about uh, Marin, just to let you know that she's absolutely fine. Um, I, I spoke with her last night via Skype and uh, she was in very good form, so that was good. And. I know a lot of you were concerned. We've got a couple of um, people who are having a tough time at the moment. And some of them wanted me to talk about it and some of them didn't. So for all of you who are sort of struggling a little bit, just hang in there. Um, just make sure that you are aware of what you're doing. Try not to... Um, isolate yourself away from humanity um, and just live. The reason I say that is because sometimes you just need a different perspective on life um, in a moment. Somebody wrote to me yesterday and they were really obviously terrified. They'd got a diagnosis that had them with um, a blood pressure problem and a high cholesterol problem. And you could tell just by the way that the, the email to me or whatever it was, uh, Facebook message, whatever it was, however it got to me, um, you could tell by the way the, the message was written, they were terrified. Um, and this was like a death sentence handed down to them. And you know, I read it and then I wrote back and said, hey, hang on a second. Just hold on one second. Before you go too far down this road, uh, do you know that I take blood pressure medication and cholesterol medication? And do I look like I am dying? <laughs> you know, um, and I, I don't mean that in an uncaring way. It's about, you know, I've got both those issues going on. And what have I done about it? Number one, I gave up smoking two years ago and now I'm doing everything I can to well that's not quite true it's not everything I can to lose weight and get healthier I am doing a lot to lose weight and get healthier and so you know I'm living now I understand we're all dying that that I get but you understand I don't want to live my life dying I want to live my life living and so I really needed to um, put a reality check in there for that viewer. Now, I didn't mean it in any way uncaring of their issue, but sometimes we just take a, something and run with it in the wrong direction. And funny enough, when I heard about that in my life, about you know, the, the blood pressure issue, um, and that came about, of course, you know, through who cares why. Um, but when I heard about that, you know, it was a wake-up call, of course it was. Um, but on the other side, I was very grateful. 
I was very grateful that we live in a time where we have medications to be able to help uh, us cope with these things. Now I know that some of you are saying yes but they're not that healthy and all the rest of it. Well hang on, they keep me alive. I, I think that's pretty healthy. So um, whoever that person was, thank you so much for writing. Thank you for giving me uh, the opportunity to be able to, to um, have a look at my own because that's what I did. I turned the mirror and it was really quite funny because I was reading it and I thought, wait a minute, haven't I got that? <laughs> and then I went, I, I am feeling great. My blood pressure is down to 100 over 60. Um, and that's when I'm stressed out going to the doctor. And, you know, if, if it gets much better, I'll probably have to stop taking the medications. Yay! We like that. So, let us get back to the question of, listen, this is, this is how this came up in the broadcast when we were talking about stuff. And we were talking about, you know, do you really tell the truth? And I think what happens to a lot of us, we get caught up in our own lies. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not that we mean to lie. What we mean to do is to be a people pleaser. Now, let's give some examples of this one. Let's say your friend phones and says, let's go to the movies, what would you like to see? And your answer is, oh, what a good idea. What would you like to see? And then the game starts. The game of people pleasing. And so I ask you to listen to yourself and see, do you, are you doing this in your daily life? Are people asking you all these very interesting questions and are you giving them the total runaround in terms of your answers? You remember I was talking about how do you want your eggs? And the answer is not how do you want yours? The answer is I actually like my scramble, if that's not too much trouble. Because that's really what all this is about. You don't want to be a pain. So then we talked a little bit about how this extrapolates out, uh, expands, if you like, out into the conversation. Let, let's take it male-female. What happens quite often when you're in relationship, be it with a, a friend who is male or with... Uh, a love interest is they'll say okay let's go to the movies and you go oh yes let's do that and what have you got in your mind the chick flick and what has he got in his mind well he's got you know Hercules 2 or something you know um, not in all cases I understand there are some guys that have the chick flick in their mind and some women who have Hercules 2 in their mind I understand that but we're talking in general terms. So, what happens is that we we compromise and so you get asked, okay, what movie do you want to go and see? Um, and, and we sort of try and find a happy medium. Now, there's nothing wrong with compromising and finding a happy medium, as long as you tell the truth first. Well, actually, I'd love to go and see the chick flick, da 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 But why don't I go and watch that with my girlfriend, Jane? I'll make a plan so we can go together. And I'm pretty sure you, you, know, you probably want to watch Hercules too. So what's your second choice? <laughs> um, you know, and 
do it in a more honest way. Listen to how you play this game. And uh, encourage the people in your life to do the same thing. As I said the other day, you know, I, I really play this game with a lot of people who visit my house, you know. And when I, I really ask them, yeah, would you like tea or coffee? Whatever you've got. No. <laughs> Whatever I've got isn't one of the choices. Tea or coffee? Which would you, or water, you know. <laughs> Which would you prefer? How about that when I ask people, um, one of the things that I like is people will say to me, my name is um, Patricia, but my friends call me Pat. So I nearly always will ask, which do you prefer? And they'll say either. Now, I doubt it. I doubt it. If you get really honest, I doubt it. Which do you prefer? So the more honest answer might be, hey, either of them works for me, but I suppose if I really look, was honest with myself, you know, Patricia is the one that I prefer. And the reason people want to know that is because they want to call you by the right name. People will say to me, um, they, they will insist on calling me Sally instead of Sal. Why? Because they've been taught not to shorten names. Well, guess what? I like Sal as a name. So what I'm inclined to say to people when they, you know, I go, my name is Sal, or Sally, but my friends call me Sal. <laughs> Make your decision whether you want to be a friend or not. <laughs> That's how I word it now. In other words, <laughs> It's quite interesting how many people still call me Sally. And I've got friends of mine from 25 years ago who still call me Sal. Sally. And it, it really cracks me up. And the, and the thing was that in those days I was Sally. I wasn't Sal. And that's how they met me, so that's how they will you know, always talk about me. So it really is quite, quite funny. So this listening to ourselves um, is, is a challenge that I want to put up for the rest of the week. Uh, really listen to how many times you, you, you don't make a decision. And uh, listen to how many times the people around you don't make a decision. And if you would be kind enough, feedback some of the examples that you have. And whether they've, you know, whether that made you, how it made you feel. In other words, if you have somebody come over and you ask them, would you like one pillow or two, you know, if they're staying over, and they go either, do you feel this is somebody who can make a decision or do you feel this is a people pleaser? Again, What's the more honest way to answer that? I don't know. It depends what your answer would be, really, honestly. In my case, it would be, hey, one's good, but if you've got two, even better. But in all honesty, one is probably all I will use. So, really have a look at all these things that we say. Um, I got into real trouble one day at the office when... When somebody asked me a question. And the question... The question has something to do with, let me try and remember, would you mind doing A, B and C? 
and it involved uh, going out of my way on my way home and you know doing something and I answered absolutely honestly and I said yes but I'll do it anyway and they took such offense at that and I was shocked I'm going well why did you take such offense you asked me a question would I mind and my honest answer is yeah sure I'd mind but will I do it anyway absolutely totally different issue now, would I rather not do it? Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather get on with my life. But if that needs to be done, then you know I'm your person. Um, so, that is the other thing. Be very careful this week. When people do tell you the truth, don't jump down their throat as soon as they do. You know, if they say, what, if you say to them, what movie would you like to see? and they say Hercules 2, you know, don't say, ah. Uh. Go, oh, awesome. What would your second choice be? <laughs> you know, um, so to me, it's like, we get so scared to tell people our truth. And when we don't tell the truth, then we're living in some ways we're living a lie and we're pretending that these things don't matter well hang on a second maybe they don't matter to you but then say so but but give the decision anyway practice making a decision life would be so much easier for a lot of us if people would just make a decision I can remember, for example, when, you know, let's say I was choosing the roof color, you know. That's not an easy decision to make. You're going to have to live with it for the next 20 years. So, you know, you don't want to make a wrong decision. How many of you, you know, you know how scary that is. What if I make the wrong decision? Well, some wrong decisions are not as important as others. I understand that. And a roof color is, you know, quite an important one. So, so it's important to give yourself time to make a right decision. But what they say about decision making is take your time making the decision. But once you've made it, stick to it and move on. In other words, once you've made that decision, don't sort of second guess yourself and go, oh, I wonder if I made the right decision. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. On very few instances is it going to be the end of your world, uh, the decision that you make. For all of you who have written recently, and um, I know there are quite a few new viewers that have done that, I really do thank you. It's always great to hear from you, those of you who are new. For those of you who are planning to come on the broadcast uh, this weekend, just know that I'm going to be away. I'm going uh, down to Benji and Judy's um, this weekend, so uh, there probably won't be any broadcasts. And if we do a surprise one, then I will announce it on Facebook and Twitter and try and give you as much warning as I can that it's going to happen. But work on the chances that there won't be a broadcast this weekend. Now, I know some of you said, well, hello, what am I meant to do then? <laughs> Get a life. Um, <laughs> try something creative. Um, bake something, draw something. I challenge you to let me know what you did instead of listen to broadcasts. Uh, for those of you who heard me say about the comic um, that we heard when, when we went to go see Engelbert Humperdinck 
I actually did Google it last night and put in how Engelbert Humperdinck came up with his name or something. I, I think that's what I Googled in. And there is a YouTube um, connection of a, a comic called Izzy Cantor, I think. Izzy something, anyway. And I want to tell you, if you want to laugh, I mean, it's a British accent, so you have to sort of wrap your brain around that if you're not used to the British accent. But it really is very, very funny. Uh, and especially if you can imagine yourself being in the room, uh, <laughs> being one of the participants to it. Uh, it really cracked me. I think I watched it three times yesterday. <laughs> because it made me laugh so much. It made me laugh when I saw it at, at the show, but it made me laugh again and again and again last night. Um, I had a very fun chat with um, Ozzy last night as well. Anyway, so here's the big thing. For those of you who are new, thank you so much for joining in. Um, if you haven't subscribed, obviously please do. We like that. Um, and you know hit the like button down here wherever it is on the page somewhere here uh, if you look through the description notes below the probably right towards the bottom there, there are most of the links that you could want I, I believe uh, in terms of the Facebook page and the Twitter and all those sort of things that um, I would like to make sure that you are at least connected via Facebook and Twitter because that's where we let people know about the broadcasts. For those of you who would like to be on the broadcast but not sure how, know that uh, what I do is if I'm going to do a broadcast I will always, I think that's pretty true, I 99.9% I, .9 of the time anyway, put up a warning sign about half an hour before we're going to broadcast uh, and I put up the link as well so that it makes it easy for you so you can just literally click on the link um, some of the broadcast channel stuff is a little bit complicated so the main thing is just get to us and tell us that you're new and not quite sure what you're doing and I can assure you that people will go out of their way to help you and remember one thing everybody else who got to a broadcast had the same problem, including yours truly. And I assure you, I had even more problems because I had to work out how to actually broadcast, never mind be a viewer.